I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 8th of February, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we're going to be talking about currency and the US dollar and the Nicaraguan Cordoba. And we're going to be talking about a new little toy that we have for the filming. Let's get to it. All right, we're gonna get straight into our topic for the day. Our first thing is we're gonna talk about, so it's Wednesday, right? I just work, I don't have anything to talk about as far as the vlog, it was a normal work day. People wanna know, I get actually a fair number of questions about this and I get it, when you're coming to a new country, the currency can be confusing and there's not always a lot of information online. So what is the currency situation here in Nicaragua? Well, it's, it's actually pretty easy. Nicaragua has its own currency known as the Cordoba. Uh, that is named after the city in Spain where one of the founders of Nicaragua came from, modern Nicaragua came from. Uh, so the Cordoba is used pretty much everywhere here. Currently, the US dollar is widely accepted to the point where you will see many, uh, even restaurant menus printed with US dollar prices. It's very easy to see, You'll explain, I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, it is very common for hotels to be priced in US dollars and certainly things like cars and rent are often priced in US dollars. Other than that, it depends. Most things on the street, most things in stores are gonna be in Cordoba. And as with any country, Local currency is gonna give you the best prices, the best buying power. Foreign currency is going to get you the most attention and most likely get you gringo priced automatically. Uh, there is a fairly simple conversion though. Uh, right now, when we moved to Nicaragua uh, two years ago, it was 35 cord to the dollar, which means 35 cord is $1, 70 cord is $2, 105 cord is $3. That was really easy. We then moved to, uh, it moved up slowly to 36. It is now currently 30 as the time, right as of today. So this does fluctuate, but not very much. They are not technically locked. They used to be locked currencies, meaning that there was a set exchange rate and it never fluctuated. That is no longer true. They do float, but they are closely tied to one another so the fluctuations are minor and slow but the current as of this morning the exchange rate is 36.6 cord per dollar that means it's about 73.2 cords for two dollars and you can do the math from there i'm not going to do it in my head but if you work with like 36 you get pretty close right 72 108 um you know like that <laughs> my math is going to fail me i'm not going to do it live on camera um so it, it's really not too hard, but it does take a little bit getting used to. But at 36.6 times expansion, that means when you look at prices, you can almost always reasonably tell what something is. If breakfast costs two, it is dollars, not cord. If it costs 70, it is cord, not dollars. It, when you first get here, you may be a little bit in culture shock as to how cheap things are. And so you may confuse the two uh, once in a while. But in general, it's pretty straightforward. When someone says your rent is 200, they don't mean Cordoba, right? I've had people ask me, oh, is it only 200 cord? I'm like, no, it is not $4 a month, right? Like, come on, let's be reasonable. It's $200 a month. But if you see things that are, you know, tens of thousands, well, that's going to be Cordoba, right? And yes, you can ask. Technically, they are written differently. The US uses the peso sign or the S with the dollar signs. We call it the dollar sign, but it is not. It is the peso sign. Um, and here in Nicaragua, they use a C with the peso sign, which stands for Cordobas. So it's supposed to be written that way. And quite often on like receipts and invoices, it will be. Uh, if people are writing it by hand, a lot of times they get sloppy. Uh, some machines do it sloppy. so. Pay attention and be aware we've accidentally been mischarged we had uh, we went to an event one time that was a hundred dollars this is a couple years ago it was 3500 Cordoba they accidentally put it through the machine in dollars because uh, the, my dog just leapt off of a retaining wall and slammed into the sidewalk which he's fine um, uh, because they, they often use the symbols loosely, it's very easy to have an accident and they charge, charged us $3,500 instead of $100. <laughs> and uh, we got called pretty quickly in a panic um, and went back and all was well, but that kind of thing can happen. So pay attention. And if you're always working in cord, you're generally, generally pretty safe. Uh, many times when you're in restaurants, look at your receipt. And if it's a, a restaurant that's a little bit more fancy, and, they're, and especially if they're giving you a, a credit card receipt, you're going to see both printed on there so you can see what their exchange rate is and choose how you want to pay. But unless you just have some cash you got to burn, 
my recommendation is when in Nicaragua, work in Cordoba. This is, I don't know any place that this isn't true, use the local currencies. You get treated better, uh, it's a better experience for you, you get better prices. If you're you know, stopping off on a cruise ship and you're only in a place for an afternoon, well that's completely different. You're willing to pay a few percentage more, you deal with a little bit more hassle, uh, simply because you're, you're there for such a short time. But if you're coming in and spending days or weeks, or especially if you're here longer, just work in Cordoba, life will be better. Some things you need to know. One is ATMs. Currently, you're able to get Cordoba or dollars from essentially any ATM. I've never seen one that was limited only to Cordoba. So sometimes they do run out of dollars. That's my dog being crazy. Uh, in the ATMs faster than they run out of Cordoba. So if you need to take out some money and it has no dollars, you may be able to get Cordoba much more likely. But in general, both are widely available and most places will accept either and everyone's familiar with the exchange rate and can mostly do it in their heads. There's also, so if you have one and need to get the other, you can change your money at any bank, but it is not recommended to do so. They don't give the best exchange rates. Where do you get the best exchange rates, you ask? The money lenders on the street, not the lenders, the money exchangers on the street. There's guys standing out, or girls, they're both, and they have just wads of cash and they'll wave it around and they're not showing off that they're rich. They're advertising that they exchange dollars and Cordoba. Sometimes other things too, but those are the only two things I've ever seen exchange. You can just walk up and they are regulated and by and large have the best rates around. That is how locals do it. That is how the expats who live here do it. If you need to exchange. Generally, you don't need to exchange. Go to the ATM, take out Cordoba, don't worry about it. If you have a bunch of Cordoba and you need a few dollars or vice versa, sure, the, the money exchanger's on the street. If you accidentally take out a whole bunch of the wrong thing and, and you don't need it, yes, you can change it on the street at pretty good rates. But in general, have just enough dollars to deal with any border crossings or things like that that you need to, need to handle. Otherwise, work completely in Cordoba. Everybody is happy to take Cordoba. And there are rumors I don't know how true or accurate or exactly what the details are, but there are rumors that the country is at very least making a push to move more strongly to Cordoba, because currently it's very much a dual currency country. Only Cordoba is official, but a bunch of government stuff is actually done in dollars, such as the border crossings. So it's worth noting that at the time of this video, it is very much a dual currency system, but there are rumors that they want to push hard to make the dollar a secondary, if not an unavailable currency. Not unavailable, but the way it is in other countries. Even in Canada, you don't go around using US dollars, except in a pinch and only at the border and you get a terrible rate, right? Here, it's very much dual currency in that they print everything in both. When you go to a restaurant, you could maybe one out of 10 times, your menu will be in US prices, which is very confusing for those of us who live here because we're used to seeing everything in Cordoba. And we're thinking in Cordoba, we're dealing with Cordoba cash. And I'm gonna show you because I have 10 Cordobas here in my pocket. Hopefully this shows up well on the, on the screen. These are attractive, very plastic. They have nice designs, different colors. They're different sizes, so it's easy to feel what you have. This is a 10 Cordoba, so it's about, um, it's, it's a little bit more than 25 cents. It's between 25 and 30 cents and a value. And um, so when you're, uh, when you're out and you get these things printed in the wrong thing, you're like, wait, that's, oh, what, what is that now? I'm not dealing in US dollars. I don't, I don't think that way. Uh, that can be that can be a little bit confusing. So I, it's actually really nice if the country moved to all Cordoba for internal pricing. When you print things that's supposed to be in Cordoba, that would be fantastic. I'd actually really like that. What that rule is going to mean for us, whether it's really going to affect anything, whether it's actually happening, I don't know. I will keep you guys apprised as I learn more about that, if it's even a thing. At this moment, assume it doesn't affect you, but just in case, I am aware that it may be a thing and I'm watching out for it. Uh, but dealing with currencies here, very simple. Work at the ATM. Uh, now, anytime you're traveling, this is general traveling advice, but Nicaragua is definitely included in this, you should have a traveler's credit card, meaning an international card that doesn't have international transaction fees. Uh, these are pretty easy to get. Most banks will offer them, most real banks, right? If you're going to your credit union, you, you may be out of luck, uh, but go to a real bank. Um, Chase Sapphire is a good one. Charles Schwab is a good one. Uh, bank of America certainly offers them, as do others. I guarantee Wells Fargo has one and uh, uh, just everybody, right? You, you just look for those with the no transaction fees. Even if you have a very low limit, that's what you should have for your international travel. Even if all you do is use that and then top it up from a, from a bank account every day, every week, whatever, that's fine. Right, treat it like a debit card. You want that credit card for protection and ease of use, but you need to have one that does not have the international transaction fees, and then you're good to go. I happen to use Chase Sapphire. Uh, friends use Charles Schwab. Both of those work excellent, um, and I would recommend those for sure. Not saying anyone else is bad, just saying those are the ones we have experience with and have been very happy with. 
Uh, one of the things that is important to note though, when you're using an international credit card or any credit card at a restaurant or something here, you go to pay, they are likely to ask you dollars or cord. You want cord, but you always want local currency. This is one of those traveler tips. Your credit card will give you the best possible exchange rate. There's no way you're going to get a better exchange rate at the restaurant or wherever you're paying. You do not want them to do the conversion and then charge you in dollars as a foreign entity. Just pay local with your foreign card and all is well. Everything will be handled by your, your international card and you are good. That, that's amazing to me how many people miss that and that's why they ask, right? If everyone knew how to do that, they wouldn't even bother asking because we would always be like, no, 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 always Cordoba, obviously. But they always want to charge you in dollars because they want to make the exchange fee. Even if it's just like an extra 1%, that's how they top up their earnings, right? So they push hard to be the ones who do that. They'll always want to do that by default. You don't want to let them always say local currency and just let the card handle it. That's the beauty of an international traveler's card. That's its function, right? That's why you do it. So use the ATMs. Don't worry about bringing in cash. Of course, bring in a couple dollars, right? Always have enough to get through the border and get a drink. But don't worry about bringing cash in with you. We've talked about that in other episodes. Bring in an ATM card, have an international credit card. You are good to go, right? That's all I travel with normally is just two cards, right? Plus my driver's license. I have my, my little packet of things. It fits in my pocket very hard. If I lose it, I've got duplicates. I know what I have. Um, and I have enough that I can go to an ATM and get out local currency or dollars if I need. And I can go use my credit card wherever and just charge in Cordoba and get a great deal and, and pay that card later. That functionality is fantastic. So you really need, you don't need to carry a lot of cash. Once, once you get here, you may want cash because this is a cash heavy society. So having, and lots of places like my place, currently cash only, Sua, the giant restaurant in Leon and the beach. I mean, giant, they're really, really big and they own other restaurants, right? Their group is cash only right now. Lots of places move back and forth. They want to take credit cards, but something happens, they can't, and they go to cash only, they switch back and forth. Like us, we're currently cash only, we'll go back to credit cards uh, in the future. Right, that's a normal thing here. So always have the expectation that you may want to pay with card, be ready to pay cash at any given moment. So carrying a bit of cash, not a problem. People will take out uh, between 13 and 25,000 Cordoba at a time. Um, and, and you may not want to carry that all in your pocket, but keep some in your hotel room, your apartment, whatever. But carrying many thousands of Cordoba on you uh, at any given time is reasonable because going out to dinner while you are unlikely to spend 3,000 Cordoba at dinner, it's nice to have enough money to know that you can do so. Still take a taxi, maybe go out to a club. You know, you want enough to be able to do a lot of activities and have lots of comfort and you never know when you're gonna have to take a 500 cord taxi ride because you're going somewhere really far or just you want buffer, right? But that's about it. Just get your cash at the ATM and pay for things uh, with that international credit card and life is pretty darn easy. And just remember 36, roughly, it's currently 36.6. Look it up, xe.com is a great place to get the absolute uh, current exchange rate and you'll have a great idea of how it works. All right, now we're gonna look at the new toy I have for filming with the GoPro. All right, so we're talking new stuff on the GoPro and what is it today? And so I get some, some you know, pretty mundane stuff, but it's exciting for me because I do the show every day and the little things make all the difference. We're actually gonna take a quick break because we have a loud speaker coming down the street. We'll be right back. All right, they've moved on a bit. Now, this is gonna be a little bit hard to show because I have the microphone on, so we're gonna have to do some of this without it, but I have a new selfie stick from Ulanzi. Now, I like stuff from Ulanzi. I use, if you watch my show, you know I have Falcam uh, F38 uh, quick releases for my other cameras and I love them. I'm so happy with that. It's it's fantastic. Well, I found uh, someone using this Ulanzi uh, selfie stick. It's a, it's a 57 inch extending selfie stick and normally you see me filming a lot like this with a very short stick held at arm length. Well, now I can do things like this and this is the limit of how far my microphone will stretch. And this is with the linear option on the lens on the GoPro. So you can actually get quite some distance away. This is fantastic. I can't even see the screen. I have no idea what you guys are seeing, but I can give you this. I, I can tell that I'm, I, I can see like the tree, but I can't see myself because uh, the screen is so small. Hey, GoPro, we need bigger screens. I don't know where you're gonna put it, but it would be nice. Uh, and, and I think this is cool because I can get very different shots than I've gotten in the past and make myself a lot less of the shot. Uh, Cause sometimes you guys wanna see me talking or it's nice to just kind of have that point of interest in there. Uh, but you also wanna be able to see the background a bit more. And this gives us that without 
needing to go to a super wide lens, which gives a different view. So I'm excited about having this, but it does more than this. So first of all, this is only partially extended, and this is on the linear with horizon lock uh, lens. So we're gonna test a few different things, um, including uh, changing the lens setting so we can get an extreme, uh, but I have to take off the microphone, so I'm gonna dub that over afterwards. But before we do that, I'm gonna talk about the fact that this also turns into a tripod. Now it's not the most stable tripod, so I can't use it in high winds, but um, it's 57 inches tall and it, the bottom of it just converts to a tripod. So I'm able to extend it to its full length, turn out the tripod, set it down and look at the camera and talk to it while, not, while having my hands free. That's fantastic. It also lets me set up and be in shots. Um, and of course I can not extend it and hold it like a selfie stick and turn on the or turn on, extend the tripod and set it like on a table or something um, and get a really nice effect that way. So this is a really versatile tool. Uh, it is bigger and heavier than most of my selfie sticks. The normal one I use is a floaty, which weighs nothing because it's meant to float in water. This one will not float in water. So I need to be careful. I can't drop the GoPro into the ocean when using this stick. Um, I don't know how well, I think it'll hold up fine to the elements if I take it out in the rain, I'm not worried about that. It also has a magnetic quick release on the top. Now it's my only one of these Ulanzi GoPro quick releases, uh, even though I have the Falcam for the other stuff. Uh, so for that, I need to buy more. I tried to get more when I bought this because Alan brought this from the US for me, um, but they were out of stock. I couldn't get them in the next like two weeks. So that is a sometime in the future. If, if someone is coming down uh, in the next few weeks, I'm gonna try to get one or two of these quick releases shipped to them so I can start using the Ulanzi GoPro quick releases other places. I'm in love with quick releases. I do so much filming and moving around that things like tripods and selfie sticks and quick releases, things that, that you'd be like, is that really exciting? To those of us who film all the time, it is seriously exciting. But that is enough about this stick. This is it's like $25, this is fantastic. I'm, I'm already really happy with it. And this is my first day filming with it. I've been really looking forward to this, but I've been busy. And uh, Mia is very excited that she gets to be in more shots now because I'm able to just get more of the yard in. But we're gonna extend it to its full length and do a little bit like that. And then we're going to extend it to its full length and go to the ultra wide on the new GoPro 11 because the GoPro 11 goes wider than the other GoPros. So we're gonna see just how much we can fit into a shot with this stick. All right, let's try it out. All right, so we have the, I actually didn't quite extend this all the way. It goes about another foot farther than this, uh, but with this way out at arm's length, we can get a lot of view here. I like how this looks. Uh, it's, it's pretty nice. There's gonna be a lot of versatility to this. I like that I can get it places that I can't go on my own normally. I can do a bunch of effects with this that I think will be really cool. I'm looking forward to playing with it, right? This is such a simple purchase. And for $25 to have so much functionality um, and be able to change the way that the, the show looks so much and just so much more versatility, I don't mind that it weighs a little bit more. I'm hoping when I do long walks that this doesn't become a big problem, but I'm gonna play with it a lot. Now, next we're gonna switch to the hyper wide or hyper view or whatever they call it. This is new to the GoPro 11 because it's got the new super sensor and they do some weird compression to get all this in there. So this is using actually an eight by seven sensor and compressing it into the 16 by nine that you guys see. So it always looks pretty wacky, um, but it gets a lot in. So on time lapses, it works pretty well. For actually moving the camera around, it is super goofy, uh, but I see some people do it. But just to give you an idea of what is possible, with the camera, this is this is pretty neat. And of course, it's also great for getting shots of the dogs because if I walk up too close to the dogs, they interact with me. But if I just put the camera a lot closer to the dogs, a lot of times they're happy to just go play and do stuff. And so uh, it, it can be handy for that too. And I'm looking forward to doing some cool shots around the garden and stuff that I couldn't do before uh, without a long extension arm. There's just a lot of things that having something like this is great for. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show and help me be able to afford things like this tripod. And by the way, I'm filming this in tripod mode now. Notice my hands are free. So we're trying it out. This is fully extended. So it's, it's not quite at my eye level, but it's not bad at all. I can always just do this too. I'm just put my feet wide and now it is at eye level. And uh, uh, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Uh, and that helps me to afford all this gear that I hope makes the show more interesting for you. I know today this is just goofy, but we're gonna be using this for when we go out on walks and stuff. We're gonna get like places we can't go, get over walls and, and get farther away, get more of the background. I think it's gonna be good. I think you're gonna like it. And uh, as always, share on social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
please share the show. That's how people find Reddit. How else are people going to know about this show? If you are in any groups, like relocation groups or whatever, get out there and uh, tell them about the show. We've got information about people looking to just learn more about Nicaragua, looking to relocate, whatever. I'm also working on, I know some of you have asked, some of you have worked with us on relocation. We are putting together a more formal thing very quickly. We will have a name uh, to tell you hopefully in just a few days, uh, as well as a new brand logo and everything. Valentina's working on that. Also, by the time you're seeing this episode, I should be in a different city filming some cool, interesting content for you guys that will upload very soon. Also coming up, I have a uh, episode that I do not believe you will have seen yet. It should be coming in three days, I think. Uh, we're going to do quite an amazing walk with some really cool uh, um, time-lapse stuff, so definitely stay tuned for that on the 11th. That one is going to be really interesting, I think, um, especially for those interested in Leon and Beach area or just walking around Nicaragua in general. Other than that, thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow. <laughs>